hi guys welcome back to my channel thank you guys so much for stopping by here today i mean if this is your first time i really appreciate this and i hope you keep on coming back and if you have been here before thank you again for coming back um in today's video we'll be making a 3d hard gift box i got the svg from etsy but i'll be putting it together and um i just want to carry you guys along as i do it so i hope you stay to the end in the meantime please don't forget to subscribe like and comment even when you're done with this video so let's get right into it so guys the material we'll need for this project includes our cricut machine the mat which we'll place the cardstock on i'm going to be using a black cardstock so i have black right here uh, i'm also going to be using this glue i know uh, some people use the ones that don't have water in them but this is water base and this is what I have so this is what I'll be using I'm also going to be using my brayer to put down the cast stock on the mat and then I'll be because I'll be making some roses too I have my quilling tool right here for that I also have this pen because I'm going to use it to make sure that when I put when I join two parts of the cast stock together it adheres together uh, what else do I be using? I need Cricut Design Space and for now that's it. So let's get right into it. So right now I open, I'm opening Cricut Design Space. I'm going to do new project. As this is an SVG I've already bought, I've already uploaded it. So I'm just going to go to click upload and click on the image, so the, which is this one. And then do insert image. So now image has been inserted and I need to change, um, especially this part right here. It needs to be, it needs to have a scoring part and a cutting part. So what I'll do is I'll ungroup this, I'll ungroup everything and click on this one. Uh, when I click on it, you can see everything here that is grouped. But if I look at this part, I can see this is still uh, part of the, part of the side you have to cut. So everything here is just for cutting, cutting. This part, when I click on it, that's everything and I know it's for the scoring part. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but I can. I know that's the part I have to score. So I'm going to go to line types right here. Click on the drop down button and click score. Now you can see that there's some sort of dashed lines above it. Meaning that it's going to score that part first and then cut it. So what I'll do is pick the part that I scored and click on this whole thing or just click group which is everything so it will, it will group both the scoring part and the cutting part and I'll click attach so this is just so that it knows that for this part it needs to score and then cut now I'll go to this part also same thing like before when I click on this part you can see it's, it kind of highlights almost everything and that's the part I need to score so I'm going to go to line types again click score and you can see that it has sort of like a dashed line on top of it. That will tell the machine to score. And then I'll click everything, the whole group, and then I'll do attach. This so that it shows, it tells the machine it needs to score and then cut. So now I've done that for those, for both parts. The other part don't need to be, oh no, this part needs to be. So you can see cut, most times you can see that it's almost invisible. There, I'm going to change that to score. So click on drop down menu of line type as before, change it to score, and then click both of them and do attach. So it's going to tell the computer it needs to, it's going to tell the machine rather it needs to score and then cut. I'll do the same thing for this other part. Yeah, so this part right here. You can you kind of see the lines on them and it needs to score that. So I'm going to click on the part that says cut, change the line type again to score. You can see now it has sort of like a dash line which tells the machine it needs to score and then I'll click on everything there and attach. So now it's score and cut. For this part, the parts that look like you know the heart shape, you don't need to do anything. They are fine just the way they are. So now I'll click make it. Now I'm considering changing the colors but I'm not, I'm not sure yet because I'm using a, a small cardstock and I want them to fit. But for now, what I'll do is click make it. So the computer has arranged it the way it thinks everything will be. Uh, everything needs to be arranged. Um, let me look at my cardstock. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure I measured my cardstock. I think it will fit. I'm not 100% on that. So the cardstock is like 28. 
which is fine for length but width wise it is yeah 21 point i'm not 100 percent sure on this one so i might move it because i'm not 100 percent sure and i don't want it to cut part of it or leave part of it so i might move it um, so what i'll do is move this one so click click the three like where it has like three dots and then click on move object and i'll move it to this point this other mat and click confirm so it's here right now I'm, i think i'm going to move this hat shape to the third mat that has the other hat shape i just need to walk around to figure out how to put everything and make sure it's fine i'll just play with it to turn things around to make sure it fits so I've arranged this in a way that it will fit right into the cut stuff. And then I'll go to the third one. This will also fit right into the cut stock. So I think everything is fine. I might have some SS, but then I can always save the cut stock, the SS from my cut stock. So that's fine. So once I'm done with rearranging everything, I'll click continue. I'm just trying to find my maker. And it has done that. So I'm going to select the cardstock which I'll be using, which is um, the light cardstock. I'm using 65 pound cardstock. So I'll click on that. And it's just telling me which tool to load. So for the first one, it's telling me to load the scoring tool and then insert uh, and then load the mats and then before I click go button. So I'm going to get to that. So I put my mat. I put my cut stock on my mat. Now I'm just going to use the brayer to adhere. This is because my cut, my mat is losing its stickiness, um, and I haven't cleaned it. I think I said this the last time. I hopefully I clean it soon. So also I'm going to change my blades because I had my um, fine point blade in. So I'm going to change it to my scoring tool, which is this one. And now I'm going to put my mat in my machine and click the load button. Now it's telling me to click the Cricut button, which is the go button. I'll do that. And now we'll just let it score. So my machine is done scoring and now it wants me to insert the fine point blade and continue so that I can cut. So I'm going to remove the scoring wheel, put my fine point, point blade, fine point. <laughs> then I'll click the flashing button again so that it cuts now. My machine is done cutting now so I'm going to unload it and get the cut stock of the mat so I can put the next one. So I'm just going to take this off so I can put the next one. So I'm going to place the next cut stock and I believe it needs the scoring to fail first. So I'll place this and then change. So now I'm going to load it as fair what I did the first time. And then click the flashing button so that it does the scoring. So I'm changing this from the scoring wheel to fine point blade. I'll unload this and take it off the mat.
So I'm going to cut the last one, which is that one doesn't need scoring, it just needs me to cut. So put the mat on, put the cast stock on the mat as per before, and then press the load button oh, to insert it into the machine. And press the flash and see button so you can cut. It's done cutting, so we'll unload that and then take it off the mat. So, for now, I'll close the machine, I'll just click finish on design space so that I can close it for now. That's why I have enough space to put it together. I think I'll start with this part. These two go together, or this three go together. This three go together, and then this three go together. So I'll start with this part because it looks easier. I'll put this apart, aside. So I'm going to join them together. Looking at this, I know it has to go this way, or it should go this way anyways. So I'm going to do, I'm going to, um, for the parts that have been scored, so like this point, yeah. And I'm also going to fold these parts to the, because they have been scored, and they're going to go down anyways. So now that I folded everything, it's time to attach them down. And I brought this scrap because I want to use it to use it while I'm gluing to avoid the glue touching my table or touching my runner. So um, I'll do it one after the other instead of going around to put glue everywhere because that's what I did with the previous with the previous project I was doing. I'm, I did this one too before and I did it that way but now I'm going to I learned my lesson that it's better to put one after the other just to make sure it's at the right spot before you go around because in previous projects like other things I've done I just go around then glue and it just creates a mess so I'm going to do it in some projects it'll probably be easier because maybe two parts also need to be joined at the same time and I, I don't know of this I'm not 100% sure but I'm going to start with one and if I feel like oh two parts need to go down at the same time then I'll add the glue there so yeah like I showed you before this is the glue I'm using as glitter now I'll just make sure it's open properly so I'll start with this side Now for this side, it's a bit hard to put it under here because I have to turn it this way. So what I'm going to do is I'll put the glue here instead and then add that part. And I'll do the same thing for this part too. And what I'm going to do is use my, I don't know, use my quilling tool, so the bottom part, to sort of press this down. Just to, you know, add more strength to it. So I'll use this and just go in. It's almost like I'm trying to make sure that they adhere together with this. I could use my hand, but this will be stronger. Maybe more stable. So I'll just go around to all the places I've applied glue and just do this. So that's that for this part. While I'm giving it a little bit of time to set, 
because I've already folded this part, I'm going to take this one and fold the part that I've been scored. So like I did do this one, just look for anywhere where I see the line, I know that it has been scored there. And just so I'm sure. So I know I'm supposed to fold this inside. So I'm going to take that part and I'll just fold, I'll fold it towards me. So this part too, I need to fold in, inwards. So I'll just fold this part towards me. And then you can see there are some little parts which I need to fold too. So I'll fold them. I'm folding like this small part, I'm folding them both ways because I don't know like how easy it would be to would I need to do it this way or would I need to, I don't know. So I just fold them both ways so that they are flexible both ways anyways. Do the same thing with this part. So yeah, done with this one. I'm going to go back to this and add glue to the other side. So I think I'll start from this side again, but I'm not going to glue this side yet. I'll do it last. I'll just go around putting the... So I'll put this down to dry for a bit before I join this, before I join this ends. And then I'll move on to this other part. So this part goes round like this. Basically. So I'm going to join it like I did the previous one. Add some glue. I'm going to put the glue on the remaining parts and then just join those two parts. Join those two parts at the same time. As you can see, this part has been joined. Now I'm going to let it dry a bit and then while it's drying, I would fold this part, fold this part, the parts that are scored on this side. Now that I'm done, you know, folding the parts that are scored, I'm going to start attaching it. I think this should be firm enough to do that. So I'm going to start from this side again. And I'll just do this part. I'm not going to join this yet. I'll just do the down before I go around and join things. I'm just trying to make sure this stays down because I feel like this part is a more, it's more tricky com compared to this part. This wasn't really tricky, but this part because of how how it's shaped. So instead of putting it first and going around to use the quilling tool to make sure it adheres, I'm just doing it now just to make sure that when I'm wiggling the other parts to put it, it still stays down there. So now I think I'll do two at the same time. I'll just add the glue. So I'll put this aside too. 
dry and now I'm going to make sure this is joined at every corner so I just have to two, two spots to join together and I'm going to put glue and join them so I'm done with putting this part together oops I'm going to just put it aside to dry some more and then I'll work on this again so for this one I'll start with the inner parts downwards inner you get what I'm saying I'll start with these parts So I'm done, I'm done joining every part together so you can see this is the base and this is the top so yeah this is what it looks like when it's put together the base and the top it looks very cute well um, I'm going to let it dry for a bit and I'm going to take it a bit further and style it so I had different thoughts in my head but um, like I had one where I just had chocolate and then a rose on top of the chocolate but I don't have um, enough chocolate to do that and um, also because I want to do two of them like another thing we had so I don't have enough chocolate for two so I think what I'll do is I'm going to put half chocolate on one side I have the Ferrero on one side and then um, the other side I'm going to make it roses so let's get into it I'm going to cut out my roses and then roll them and then glue them so you're going to see me back here when I'm done with my roses yeah all right guys I'm finally done with the roses so I made five I also made two white because I have a pink one here too so I'm going to use white for the pink and this will be kind of different anyways so let's focus on this one uh, I'm going to do half of it with the roses and the five should, five of these will fit half and then I have some Ferrari here which I'm going to do for the other half so let's get into it since the roses are made to attach it to this I'm going to use my hot glue yep first of all I'll arrange it just to make sure I know where I want everything to fit before I start gluing it down I think this looks fine enough so I'm going to take it out and start gluing it down I'll put that aside and I'll just glue this ones too but this one side I'm just going to put it like this a big they're firm enough so Oh, how good does this look? Mm, I think that would do. Instead of adding an hour when I'm making it and squeezing it, which I could do, but this would do just fine. Like, how cute does this look? <laughs> and for this one, I'll just put the ferro around. So, and for this one, I'll leave it this way. That looks good enough in my eyes. And yeah. Your box is ready. All you need to do now is cover it up and give it away. This is what a person gets when they open it. Put that aside. And for this one. This is what a person gets when they open it. Like how cute is this? So yeah, that's it guys. That's it from oh yeah. Um before I before I end this video, one thing you could do with this is you know to just make it extra special is when you close it you can add a ribbon. And a note too if you want to do that on top. Um, I don't have a note right now, but hopefully I can figure out how to make a ribbon.
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and enjoy seeing me put together the 3D hard gift box. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and help my channel grow. I really appreciate all your support and until the next time, stay well and stay blessed. Bye.